Hey fellow Vault Dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and today I will help you out. If you are one of those that say, oh, I don't care about the rate, I cannot find the team. I would love the four star and three awards, but I cannot do it solo and no one to help me. So what can you do solo? Actually, you can do a lot because the stage one, the robot, you can cheese through solo. It's way easier. I would say it's 10 times easier than farming actual raid, just choosing the first robot. And you can get most rewards, okay? Not exactly all. And drop chances are a little bit lower on the robot alone, but you can do it. So, as you can see, I'm entering solo. I'm not going as a team solo myself. And, yeah, some kind of preparation will be required. You cannot go with your existing build as is and expect for the best. So, what I recommend the most, the most important part, Troubleshooter's power armor. It doesn't matter what. Does, I have union, doesn't matter. The other stars, doesn't matter. It could be one star mix of different pieces, but troubleshooter, you must have. Then second one, very good, but only for one hour a day. Human robot interfacing. Adelaide companion. I will try to link uh, my video when I first uh, reviewed Adelaide. It's once a day. And only for one hour, but you can cheese through for one hour way easier with this buff, human robot interfacing. Uh, she she was from a season pass, but now it's available with gold bullion if you need Adelaide. The second most important, you want your bullet shield. And if you can add ricochet, add them both. Those two you will be using to cheese through the robot shield relatively easily. That's my full heavy gunner raid runner build you don't need a full build that's a good news for you most of those perks you could skip what you should focus healing perks more health damage evasion but most important bullet shield ricochet you will see as it goes what you need now for the robot there are two ways to go through you can go heavy gunner you can go melee or you can try commando with power armor, more tricky, I will show you too. So melee and heavy gunner approach. Melee, of course, it will be auto axe route, but you still want the deflection perks and you still want some kind of a heavy gun with vampire if you want to save on steam pack. So I have that minigun shredder I normally use as a shredder, but now I took this ammo that in other circumstances I would be just tossing away. So I have no use case for this gun for the ammo, but now very handy, free healing. I will change this ammo into free healing. So what do we do? I will show you first melee approach. It's a little bit more difficult and gimmicky. You need to have some trickery with power armor frames. Those do not need to be actual power armors. You can own just empty frames. Don't press the button yet. So we place ourselves from the side. So that's how we cheese as melee. And then I will show you how you go through it as a power armor heavy gunner build. So first, first frame on the first step in here. Choose a second one, just jump up and place. Double check if it didn't place on the middle. Sometimes it will place itself on the middle, then you need to redo it. You don't want it on the middle or you will not be able to fight the robot. Now, you can still stand here as long as robot didn't emerge. But after that, you cannot touch the platform. So place yourself on the middle of power armor. Be careful to don't panic and don't move. If you touch the robot platform, it's instant death. So robot is emerging. Now we'll be firing this minigun just to activate the bullet shield and get some free healing. So burst of like 20 bullets at a time just for the free healing. It is doing really heavy damage up so close. But thanks to Adelaide and Troubleshooter's power armor set, plus all the steam pack effects. So you can see it's taking its own shield very effectively. So we don't need to help with that. It will take its own shield. We just need to heal. That's our purpose in here. Pay attention to your health bar. Fire minigun to heal yourself because we are so close. Basically all the damage is being deflected. Then switch to your auto axe. I like to press the block so I ensure it's actually attacking. And hit it. Now we are hitting it. In the same time, you can see how good the damage is, and I'm not even full melee build. If you are a full melee build, your damage should be better. What I have, I equipped Incisor, and I do have uh, 
uh, food, of course, food, tasty meat. And now when it's getting really hot, we need to run to the shelter. Run to the shelter. As you can see, I didn't fully kill it. And in the melee route, if you have all your boost and all perks equipped, I do not. As you can tell, there is no melee perks outside of Incisor. You should be able to do it in one go. If you cannot, then you just repeat it. And as you pay close attention, when the robot is taking its own shields down, it's doing a little, a little bit of damage to itself too. So it's not just shields, it's damaging itself as well. There is one more thing, but that's a bug and not as much a strategy, but I will tell you about it. If you die, if you don't run to the shelter and you die while attacking the bot and then you respawn, the new bot will spawn without working shield, so you'll be able to straight away straight attack, straight attacking it and kill it without taking its shield down. But that will happen, and it's most likely a bug and not a feature, so I'm just letting you know. But you shouldn't be relying on the fact that shield will not work. Now, what to do after the Guardian still has some health? And, of course, at this point, it's a problem to get there with melee. You can do some creative jumpy attacks, like if I would equip... Auto axe again, I don't even know if I will succeed. The the floor is electrified, so we want the piece of the floor without electricity. You can spin your auto axe and try to try to jump, or if you have a jetpack, jump forward and touch it and fly back. But if you touch the platform, that's game over. So you cannot touch the platform. That's the that's the biggest issue with that. Alternatively, you could finish with a heavy gun or just 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 wait and do it on the last wave because on the last wave you have more damage every time you take down the shield new shield spawns and you take it down again the robot is more fragile you are doing more damage so that's your advantage as well and there are only three shelters so we cannot wait too long I already used two shelters, so now I can locate where is the last one, so I don't need to look for it. So B. B is left. I can still wait for the robot to take its own shield. I can still hide, take for the robot to take its own shield, but after that I will need to finish it off. And if you pay close attention to Electrify Floor, there are safe spots from time to time. So the floor is not as bad. There are safe spots, but they are moving, and floor is doing a lot of damage. So you need to be very careful, careful if you want to get close again or tries to place a power armor frames. It is very tricky at that point. The good news is I'm intentionally showing you to you. Farther you go, it's taking more and more damage from its own attacks when it is shooting you. So. Even if you are a little bit short after the initial phase when you attack it from placed power armors, eventually, most likely, robot will finish off itself. Or you shoot a little bit with whatever range weapons you have, or try creative jumping with your auto axe. The one thing that you could try as well, no dodgy if you are struggling if, with action points, as you know, it is... Autax is using action point. You do need to compensate with more healing or more use of steam packs when you have no dodgy equip. But you should absolutely be able to do it. And now we try to finish with a little bit of creating attack with auto axe and jumping. So we need to touch it one more time. And there it is. Oops, I'm dying. I'm sitting on the hot floor. Those are the rewards, so you will still get a bunch of legendaries. There is a chance for new power armor, new power armor plan, variety of stuff can drop. I will show you at the end some other, one more end screen when I was more lucky with rewards. Now, what to do after you finish is we want to cheese it again. We don't want to progress and stage two is almost impossible solo. So what we do, data, you have this gleaming devs quest, you press the button on the button, bottom of the screen that says reject for me it's r so i'm pressing r to reject confirm that will teleport me outside and we need to go back in and uh, this way 
will be on the turret phase again. And I'm going solo again. So I'm going solo. Let's get in. And I'm starting it again. It's available for me. This time we try a little bit of a heavy gunner. So there is several options. So you can still keep using Shredder for healing. If you're low on stim packs. I'm not low on stim packs, so I don't need. I will be using Tesla initially for slow shooting. Quite ammo efficient. And one, one advantage of the Tesla, if it's Tesla cannon with the chain or regular Tesla, but we need Tesla cannon as that counts as a heavy gun. So that will trigger for us. That will trigger for us bullet shield every time we fire. As you can see, I don't need that, so I can save to, to shoot the weak spot and the shield and do the damage. The Tesla can do the damage with the shield up, as, as it directly jumping to the shield. And my self-healing effect, so I have medic pump on the tours on this power armor as well as bone survivor will be quite sufficient. I can try to spam steam packs. Look at that. I spam stream packs now just, just for sake of it. As I have so many. Uh, farming this solo, I'm ending up with surplus of stream pack. And now when the shield is down, it would be beneficial to be able to use that and the weapon that is mostly energy damage. You really want energy damage. Without that, I'm still doing solid damage. That will help me. If I would use boost for that for more luck, it will be even better. But I'm doing some damage now. I look for the shelter and I keep firing from the shelter side. So that's important. Don't waste any opportunity to fire. I'm not using any consumables just to show you. It is possible to cheese like that without even using consumables. I progress about enough. You need to have at least 25% of health from the robot taken down between each stages as there are only three shelters. So this one is shelter is exhausted. We can already move and stand in between next two. So there is B and there is A. I intentionally stand in between so it's close to either one of those. I keep going with Tesla for this phase. So I do a little bit of damage slowly firing this Tesla while waiting for the shield to go down from my deflection effects. And I don't yet have any 4-star deflection on my power armor, to be clear. So I'm not relying on 4-star effects. You can do it as endgame build before you get your 4-star. So you don't need to worry about that. And look how, how nice it is. Slowly but surely, uh, we are getting our progress. You could go and do that as well. But we are then need to target shield systems and not the torso. If I target torso in VATS, I'm not really doing damage. Okay, I'm intentionally targeting Torso, and you can see it's not working until the shield will be down. After the shield is down, this weapon is insufficient. That's the amount of damage I'm doing. It is doing damage. It's just a little bit too slow. If you really want to save ammo, you could go with something like a Plasma Caster. This is slightly low, even for ammo saving. Okay, B is opening. So I'm entering B, and I continue firing now with my Gatling Plasma. All energy weapons are good because if you pay attention to its resistances, energy is the lowest resistance on this bot. One more tip, if you really need this extra DPS, you can be firing when the door oh, didn't work out as I ran out of ammo, but for a brief moment after doors do break, the turret is still vulnerable, so you could be getting like additional 10 shots or so when turret is still vulnerable. Now we are moving close to A so we can just step backwards when the shield goes down. So time optimizing is more important when your damage is lacking. I could really kill it faster with boost to my damage like consumable, psycho buff, luck boosters and so on. But I want to show you a situation when you don't yet have a crazy good stuff in your disposal and maybe you don't have this tesla so then you just use a shredder to heal yourself and save on steam packs as most of the damage during the shield phase is done by the turret itself back to itself so it's not you that's doing damage when the shield is up it's the turret that is doing damage to itself when you are firing and waiting now get ready gatling plasma we are there, and now try to do as much damage as possible as only one shelter left. 
But as you can see, our damage is going up due to the fact that every time, as I said before, every time you circle through the shield, respawn and taken down, the turret is getting softer and softer. So after the last shelter, the turret will be the softest. After this phase, the turret will be the softest, but that's your last time you will have opportunity to do damage. And I want to show you that. Let me let me slag a little bit more. So it will be tight. I will show you a tight scenario. And now I can start firing already. And look, the first bullet will do damage. So if you really need this edge, the first bullet still did damage. Now I use free healing from my shredder. And activation of the bullet shield. You do need to fire your heavy gun at least once per 6 seconds just to have bullet shield up. And now it doesn't really matter when we stand, as there is no shelter left, so there is no running again. There is no running. Now, you either kill it, or it's game over. If you're out of the shelters, there is no going, hiding and returning. So you don't try to run at this phase. After you exhaust all three shelters, you face it. You just face it, and you need to kill it. You either kill it, or you're dead. So... If you fail at this point, go and look for more damage before you will try to cheese the turret again. It means your damage is insufficient if you will fail. And then you need more damage. There's nothing else you can do. Just get more damage. Okay, I will try to move myself a little bit closer. If you if you look at the spots, like oh, with the terminal, you can get closer here by standing between this terminal and the barrier. As well, you cannot be pushed anywhere. Even if you get staggered, there's like no physical way for you to move anywhere. Okay, I was not firing. I forgot and I almost died. But I didn't, so it's all fine still. I'm out of ammo of that, but it's okay. Now the Gatling Plasma. And fire! And that's our last opportunity, but as you can see, we are doing really good damage. So we can do it even without bots. And there you go. That's how you cheese through it. If I would run out of time... I need to look for more damage. And that's what we have. Vulcan targeting head. Okay, lucky one. Lucky plan. Cloaking Vulcan torso as well. Free star. And the plan. So that was a really good run. Really good finish. So that's how you can cheese and farm. And then to repeat again. Just back to the pit boy. Abandon. Rinse. And repeat. Or as Teddy Bear is saying. Cook the tato with a teddy bear. Which absolutely doesn't make sense. And with those words, this is everything that I have for you today. I hope it's helpful. Let me know if you do have any questions. And see you everyone soon.